Hello, welcome to part two of the Unity UI tutorial. In this part, I'm going to show you how to make a simple pause menu. So the pause menu is going to be made up of two parts. We're going to have the canvas elements, so that's going to be a panel and a button. And then we're going to have the code elements, so we're going to have a script that pauses the game using time scale, which is uh, a property of time in the game that we can edit to change the rate at which time passes. So the first thing I'll do is I'll create a new panel for the pause menu. I like to create new menus, new uh, screens, new modals as panels. So I find that keeps them a lot more organized. So I'm going to create a UI panel with my canvas selected, and it's going to jump right into the hierarchy there. Um, and right away, before I forget, I'm going to call it panel underscore pause, just to keep these um, organized. I actually don't need underscore for game objects. That's just kind of a, a habit of mine. So I'll do panel space pause. So we can see here, um, the panel has filled the whole screen. If we wanted this to be completely opaque, we can just change the color. Um, or you could give it a material and an image if we liked as well. But I'm going to keep it just a uh, mostly opaque white for now. If we don't want this to fill the whole screen, there's a couple ways we can change this. Um, you can simply scale this if you'd like to make it only take up the center of the screen. Um, but I prefer to use the actual UI alignment tools here. So. What we can do is we can add padding to the all the sides, so I can say 50, sorry, 50 from the left, the top, the right, and the bottom, and you can see it pushes it in that much. And remember, if you follow the last video, your canvas is set to scale with the screen size, so that 50 pixels measurement is something that's going to be based on that original screen size that you're designing for, so it's not actually 50 pixels. Um, we can also change, if you click on this button right here, we can change based on the UI scaling. So this button um, versus the raw edit mode, the blueprint mode, gives us some nice, uh, nice controls, nice feedback on how we're actually resizing. It gives us a little bit of snapping and it gives us the, the top and the left position as we move it around, which can be very helpful. I can make this a little bit smaller. I tend to prefer to work with these numbers. So I'll give it uh, 200 from the left and the right and 100 from top and the bottom. Okay. Um, all the text and the buttons I'm going to add will go inside this panel so that I can turn the game object on and off to enable and disable it. So I'll make a text, put it inside that panel, make it centered. Um, and centered within the screen, so pivot should be no, pivot should stay the same, and it should just be center aligned with a zero position. There we go. And we can move it up a little bit, give it a bigger font size. There we go. So we can label it paused, and then I'll add a button in here. So a UI button. And again, I can just set position X to zero in order to center it. And this button will unpause. Okay, so that's our pause panel. Make sure those are all inside the group. We're going to turn this on and off in order to toggle and untoggle it. Then I need a button in-game to actually make the pausing happen. So I'll make a new button. So let's call this button pause. These usually go nice in the corner. Uh, I'm using the top right for this counter I made earlier, so I'll use the top left for this. Change the pivot to the top left here. Okay, and then we can just move this back out. Okay, so everything in the canvas is aligned up properly. We just need to create a script that's going to make all this happen now. So I'm going to create a new C Sharp script, and I'm just going to call this pause. So 
So we want to make sure that objects are being turned on and off, right? When we click this pause button, I want this to appear and the pause button itself to disappear. So I'm going to need references to both those things if I'm going to be able to turn them on and off. So I'll make a public game object, make that size bigger for you. Uh, pause button and pause panel. I'm going to put this script on the pause button. Actually, I'll put it on the canvas. I want this pause script to be somewhere where it's always going to be uh, in gameplay. So if it's put on an object that's getting disabled and enabled, I'm going to have trouble accessing it. So I don't want to put it on the button or the panel. So I'll just stick it on the canvas for now. Um, you might want to do an empty game object that's just called pause. But I'll put pause button in here and my pause panel here. So now the script is aware of these two objects existing. Now make a public void. Pause. So first I'll do the pause button. So pausing the game itself is relatively easy. Time.timescale equals zero. So we're changing the rate at which time passes in the game to be zero. That's pretty easy. And then we can do another one, so we can do unpause. And that sets the time scale back to one. Uh, it does not like me naming this the same thing, so I'm just gonna call this on pause, on unpause. Okay, so we've got this script that will pause and unpause the game. So I'll test out that first bit right now. So this pause button right here, uh, we're going to add an on-click target to it. So I'm going to click plus sign, give it the game object with the script on it that I want to access. Under no function, I'll go to pause, on pause. So I can test that out. I'll hit play. I can move around and if I hit pause, everything stops. And I haven't put unpause in yet, so we're not gonna see it unpause. So we can add that in as well. Here's our button resume. Uh, I click plus, add that canvas object with the script on it and unpause. So I'm moving around, I hit pause, I stop, I hit resume, I go back. Perfect, and now we just need to hide and unhide the menus. So on pause, I want pause panel to turn on, and pause button oops, to turn off. And then I want the opposite for unpause. So I want pause panel to turn back off, and pause button to turn back on. good and then I should leave pause panel off by default or if I'm worried that I'm going to accidentally uh, leave this on so say I'm working on styling this later and I want to be able to play without having it open by default I can save the default position um, in start so in start I can set the panel to turn off by default and the button to turn on by default What might be a better idea is to just unpause when the game starts. That way, we're starting the game unpaused, which is going to make sure that time scale is still equal to one. Um, an issue that you, we can run into occasionally, an issue that we run into occasionally using time scale to pause and unpause, is that you may set time scale to zero and then go and load a new level when the time scale is still set to zero. Um, which may prevent things from occurring in that other scene. So anytime you exit, if we were to make a back to main menu button, make sure you set time scale back to one before you leave this screen. There you go. So now, even if I leave this panel enabled, when I play, it should hide by default. There you go. So that's your pause screen.